Have you ever heard the saying that a dollar saved is a dollar earned? Well, I'm trying to live by that philosophy over the last few weeks, and there are certainly some things that I've now put in place that is saving me money on a weekly basis. So in today's episode, I really wanted to get that information across to you and get the conversation started around ways that you can save money as an online reseller. You know, it's great to make a really big sale, but it's all the little bits and pieces that happens day to day that can really eat away at that bottom line. So I want to get these points across to you to hopefully help your reselling business out there, whether you're just getting started or whether you've been in the game for a while, because these tips are going to help you no matter what stage that you're at. Um, so hopefully you get some value out of it. I'm pumped against this one. So let's get straight into it. If you're here for the very first time, my name is Matt Diedrich and I am an online reseller. I do these videos three times a week and this Tuesday episode is my best hints, tips and tricks to help you out there in your reselling. On a Thursday, I do a trip to the thrift and I take you around a few different op shops each and every week. And then on a Sunday, I'll do my what sold video as well. So if you're into reselling by any means, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and also give this video a like because that really does help the YouTube channel out a lot. Uh, in today's episode, like I said, we're gonna touch on those ways to save money for your business. Now, the first area that I wanted to talk about is postage supplies. Now, postage is gonna be obviously a massive part of your reselling business. So if you can be sourcing items for a very low price for your postage supplies, that's gonna be a really fast way to save some money. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm going to Bunnings Warehouse, a local timber and hardware store here in Australia, and I'm getting my boxes for free. They've always got a heap of different sizes there to pick from. And as long as you're getting the right type of box and something that's firm, you know, sturdy, no rips or anything to it, um, just stock up on those because they're gonna be your free sort of parcel um, for your postage send. So I do that and then within the boxes, sometimes you can often find some butcher's paper as well. Now, I sort of collect this butcher's paper wherever I can because it's a really good lining to sort of pad out the box when you go and send your item. Um, I'll often at times even wrap the item in butcher's paper and that avoids having to go out and buy bubble wrap because bubble wrap can be quite expensive. Um, never had a bad review when I put it into butcher's paper and, and put the box in and sort of filled it up with the butcher's paper. Um, it's always been sort of received on their end really well. So again, two sort of really free items that I can regularly source with ease that I don't need to pay for. Um, I think that's been a really great way to help save some money initially. And I've also got a friend at a local Woolworths as well. And he gives me these bags of sort of inner linings. And these inner linings I used for uh, clothing and for shoes. I just sort of, you know, put them in the inner lining and then put it in the postage satchel. And that just presents really well. I, you probably don't need to do it, but I think when somebody receives it within an inner lining, it just looks like you've taken the time and effort to really sort of care for the item for its send. So he actually collects these up and he gives them to me on a weekly basis. So I'm always stocked up with free inner linings. So, you know, that's three pieces of postage supply that I don't pay for, um, that if you were to try and source and buy on a monthly basis, it would really add up. So I'm glad that I've got that that I'm doing. The other one as well is when I'm buying some supplies, I'm always trying to buy bulk or multiple of. Now, this sticky tape, it's only a three pack, but today it only cost me $4.60. Now, if you were short of any sticky tape, you went and bought yourself a single roll, at times it can be six or $7 a piece. This one only costs $4.62 and I got three rolls. So I think it's more just playing smart about which one you're buying and just taking the time to have a bit of look around and see what the best deal is and then just simply take the cheapest option. I think step one really leads into step number two nicely and that is the actual send of the item. So your postage service, what are you doing to save money in your postage service space? Well, for me, I'm set up on the Australia Post My Business Plan and that is saving me 16% discount on every single satchel that I send out in the mail. Now I've got an eight week introductory offer, they'll assess how many sales I've made over the eight weeks and then from there I'll land on some form of discount moving forward. So hopefully it's around that 16% because it saved me quite a bit. I'm saving sort of anywhere between one to $3 on every single send that I make. So that really adds up when you're doing quite a number every single week. Now, if you're not here in Australia, I still recommend that you go into your local post office and just simply ask what is the best way to save the most money if I'm gonna be coming in here and doing this regularly. Uh, I know here in Australia, there's another website or another company that does a pretty good job and that is Sendle. Now I don't endorse Sendle in any way. I personally don't use Sendle at all, but I have heard that they're a pretty good service and they do come to your house and pick up the items. And they do even do local deliveries for about $5.95, which is certainly a little bit less than I'm currently on. So I am keeping an eye on these guys, but I don't personally use them at the moment. Um, I just think at the end of the day, guys, for step number two, just make sure that no matter where you are in the world, you're going to your postal service and just asking, what is the cheapest way I can send postal um, items every single, every single week? 
Step number three is opening up an eBay store, obviously once you're ready. I'm not saying that it's the first thing that you should do is to get an eBay store, but once you get to a certain point, it's definitely, definitely necessary to save money. Now, my story was just last month, I received a $412 eBay uh, bill, and I only sold about $1,600 or $1,700 worth of stock. So a very high percentage of fees, and when I had a look into it, I realized that it was the insertion fees that I was paying of $1.65 per item once I'd done my free 40 items for the month. Now, I had to really quickly act and look at ways to obviously reduce this cost, and obviously it was for me to open up an eBay store. Now I've got 600 free listings, and I can list freely knowing that I'm not gonna be out of pocket every single time I upload a new item onto my store. So I'm really glad that I've done this. I don't think it's for those that are obviously just starting out. You'll obviously be capped being able to only upload a certain number of items uh, onto eBay in the early stages. And then when you get to your level of 40 every single month, that might be enough for you. And as long as you're not paying for insertion fees, I don't think you need to look at getting into an eBay store if you're playing with just very small items every single month. Um, but then when you expand and you're looking to try and put in you know, 50 to 60 to 70 items every single month, I think that's the time when you should look at trying to get an eBay store to save some money. Um, I learned it the hard way by spending $400 in fees when I probably didn't have to. The eBay store subscription is only $25, so it works out to about 13 items worth of insertion fees before you've paid for that. Um, so I really don't see it being a concern in paying that small fee to obviously get your hands on 600 free listings every single month. Um, there's a lot of other benefits to the store, but for me, that was the big one, um, to not have to pay the insertion fees after 40 free listings and to now be able to list freely with 600 listings. So definitely get an eBay store if you're at the point uh, and you think you've got enough items to, to start listing on a regular basis. I do think a store is a great way to save some money. The next one that I wanted to talk about are the loyalty cards. Now guys, I'm big on the loyalty cards. I love to collect them and I love to try and stamp them up as much as I can. This one's a really cool promotion. Once I get all these stamped up, I'll get $20 off. Now, $20 in an op shop can go a very long way. So look guys, I really do encourage that you go in there and you just ask, do you have a loyalty program of any kind? And then just grab them and accumulate them over time. And then when it does come to save yourself 20 bucks, that's gonna go a long way to your bottom line in reducing the overall, I guess, purchase price. So you'd be able to buy a lot with $20 I can't wait until I can use that guy. Um, but even these ones as well, they've really got great promotions and I just think it's better to have it than not. So you may as well get them stamped up. Another great way to save some money is to negotiate when you are in the op shops. Try and negotiate either on Facebook Marketplace or in the op shops, wherever you are sourcing a lower price because that first amount that you save on negotiation are the first dollars that are in your pocket. Now, I will always negotiate on almost everything that I buy because I really do think there is an opportunity there to make a few dollars and save a few dollars. So I'll always negotiate. A no is simply a no, guys. It's not a bad thing to just simply ask the question. If you do get a no, you just simply move on. So I'm always gonna negotiate, I'm gonna to continue to do it, and I'm gonna keep, I guess, encouraging people out there to negotiate if you aren't doing it already. Uh, it's a great way to obviously save some money and not be as much out of pocket uh, when you are sourcing these items. And that will go a long way to making a bigger profit come the point of sale. So always negotiate my point number five, it's a big one to focus on. My last tip would be to cross list on Facebook Marketplace. Guys, it's something that I focus quite heavily on. About 70% of my sales are actually done through Facebook Marketplace for the sole reason that there are zero fees associated with the platform. Um, if you're focused on eBay, I highly encourage that you get at least a quarter of your inventory onto Facebook Marketplace and just see how you go. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. Um, so that would be my last tip. Obviously a $25 sale on eBay is gonna result in about $21 in your pocket. If you do it on Facebook Marketplace, you're gonna receive the full $25. So I highly encourage you to use this platform if you aren't doing so already. It's just gonna be a great way to not only make money, but save money on not having to pay fees as well. Um, that are my six steps, guys. Hopefully you've really enjoyed that and got something out of it. I'd love to know in the comments below, what are you doing to save money? If you could put that into the comments, that would be great because I'm learning just as much as you guys are. I'm trying to document everything that I'm doing along my journey to be a really successful full-time online reseller. So I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. I look forward to catching you in the next episode. I really do appreciate you tuning into this one. We'll see you soon.